We've now seen how we can use an ideal diode model to gain a qualitative understanding of circuits with involving diodes. By assuming the state of one or the other of the diodes, we could go through and then analyze the circuit and determine whether the actual circuit was consistent with our assumptions. But it's kind of a guess and a trial and error type of process. We're now ready for a more, a more formal analysis process. As we've seen, the diode equation here was derived from physical properties of the PN junction and describes the voltage and current relationships for both the forward biased and the reverse biased diodes. In this equation, we note the exponential dependency of the current on the voltage. Now, we know that V sub T, the thermal voltage, is a function of temperature and that at 20 degrees centigrade, V sub T is approximately 25 millivolts. In the forward bias region, which is what we're going to talk about now in this video, we're referring to the situation where the voltage across the diode is greater than V sub T, so that the ratio of V over V sub T will be a, a number greater than 1, which when you exponentiate that number, E to some number greater than 1, that value gets large very quickly. And this minus 1 constant becomes insignificant in the forward bias. Thus, the diode equation is valid for both forward and, forward and reverse bias diodes when simplifies to this equation when we're talking about the forward bias diode. And again, as we see, there's this exponential dependency on the voltage such that we're going to now see and find out that relatively small increases in the voltage will manifest themselves in relatively large changes in the current. So this equation is valid for forward bias. And the corresponding graph then would be this graph here. When we, when we refer to the bias point, we're referring to a point on the graph that corresponds to a specific voltage across the diode and the corresponding current through the diode. So the bias point then consists of a voltage and a current, and in this case we're calling it V sub D and I sub D. Now this equation holds for all points on this graph, and so if this was one point here, and we then had another point on the graph that would correspond to another bias point with a slight change in voltage and a relatively large change in current. We now have two points on this same graph. And we can refer to them, or we can write this equation in terms of I1, the current here, say, at this point, that's related to V1, this voltage, is given by that relationship. Similarly, this other point here would be I2 is equal to I sub S e to the V2t. To get a feel for the relative changes in voltage and current, we can form the ratio of these two expressions, and we then get I2 over I1 is equal to that. The I sub S's will cancel, and we now have E to one value divided by E to another value, so the exponents of the numerator are subtract. We subtract the exponents of the denominator from that of the numerator, and we then get that I2 over I1 is equal to E to the V2 minus V1 over V sub T, or I2 is equal to I1 E to the difference in voltage divided by the thermal voltage. Now we can rearrange this equation here and solve for the difference in V2 over V1 by taking a log of both sides and rewriting it then we can say that V2, the voltage here at the second bias point, is equal to the initial voltage plus the thermal voltage times the log of the ratio of the two currents. These two equations then allow us to move from one bias point to another bias point on the graph for a given diode. For example, let's assume that we know that this first bias point corresponds to 1 milliamp, so I sub 1 is equal to 1 milliamp, and V sub 1 is equal to 0.7 volts. And we'd like to know how much change in current will arise if v we change the voltage by 0 0.05 volts. In other words, V2 increases to, that's 0.7 volts, V2 increases to 0.75 
volts. Well, we can solve for I2 over I1, the ratio of those two, and get then that I2 over I1 is equal to E to the V2, which was 0.75, minus V1, which was 0.7, divided by V sub T. We're going to just use that 0 0.025 volts or 25 millivolts. And when we calculate that or do the calculation, we find that the ratio I2 over I1 is equal to 7.4 or equivalently, I2 is 7.4 times as big as I1. So we see a 740% increase in the current that when we increase the voltage by only you know, 0.05 volts, less than 10%, a less than 10% increase in the voltage corresponds to a 7.4 times increase in current. Using this equation here, we can answer the question, how big would V2 be? How much would we need to increase the voltage to see a tenfold increase in current? So that the ratio I2 over I1 was 10, I2 being 10 times I1. Well, we'd get then that V2 minus V1, that would give us the, be the how much the increase would need to be, would equal 0 0.025 times the natural log of 10. And when we do that calculation, we find that we would need a voltage increase of 0 0.058 volts, or that V2 would be 0 0.058 volts greater than V1 to, to see a tenfold increase in the current.